Let's add some custom blocks to Minecraft. All right, we found ourselves back into the once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom blocks to Minecraft. So this is a little more complicated than adding the items. However, once you master the items, the blocks actually not too crazy. So once again, in our tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called the block package. And inside of there, we're going to right click new Java class called the mod blocks class. And in there, we're going to need something very similar to what we've already seen. So number one is a public static void register mod blocks method that is simply going to call tutorial mod .logger .info, And we're just going to say registering mod blocks for tutorial mod .mod ID. There you go. So just so that we have this and very important that we call this below the mod items register. So mod blocks dot register mod blocks. There you go. Just going to auto complete the suggestion with the tab key. And then we are well, we're already set now for the blocks. However, we need two different things because what we're going to need is we're actually going to need a register block method and a register block item method because the blocks when we register them they don't come with their items so what we're going to have to do is we're first of all going to make a private static item called register block item with a string name and a block block and an item group called group here and what we're going to do is this so maybe at some point some things here are red no worry at all. You click on them, press Alt and Enter and import the class. You can see I can just do this import class, making sure that we choose the correct one. And then same here, import class. And then everyone is happy and no more red. Now the register block item, what does this return? Well, this is going to return once again, the registry dot register with registry dot item with a new identifier. Of course, tutorial mod dot mod ID with the name that we've passed in. And then after the first parentheses, comma, new block item, very important. Once again, autocomplete this with the tab key. Then we have to pass in the block as a first parameter. And then once again, new fabric item settings here with a dot group. And then we're just going to pass in the group parameter here as well. And that basically registers the block item. Now we're going to call this in another method, which is going to be the private static block called register block method. And this is going to take a string name, a block block and an item group called group. And this is going to first of all, call the register block item method right here with name block and the group very important. And then afterwards, we're going to return the registry dot register with registry dot block with a new identifier once again, of tutorial mod dot mod ID comma name after the first parentheses comma block right here. And there you go. So once again, the registry dot register method call with the registry block registers a block under our namespace. So the tutorial mod namespace with the name that we're passing in here, and basically for this particular block. So how does this look when we are actually making a block? Well, let's first of all, make one block. And then after we've seen the entire thing through, we're going to make a second block because once again, sometimes some people are a little bit confused on how this works. So we're going to say public static final block. So this is the block called the mithril underscore block, which is equal to register block. So the first method right here, register block, which is going to have a name string. So we're going to put in the quotation marks and this name here generate automatically. You don't have to type this out. And we can say mithril underscore block here after the closing quotation mark a comma and then we're just going to put this on a new line so this is going to be a new block right here and then inside of there we're going to have fabric block settings there you go fabric block settings dot of i'm going to once again autocomplete with the tab key and we're going to say material dot metal actually yes so we're going to also autocomplete this and very important after the second parentheses we're going to make another comma and this is going to be the item group miscellaneous, and then we're going to close this. So now this would already work. However, of course, there's a few things that are kind of important. And that is once again, the fabric block settings, that is a another builder pattern. So if I put a dot in here, you can see all of the different methods that I can call on this. And there's quite a few of them. 
So you can see no collisions, drops, nothing. Luminance, there's drops, there's, there's stuff like the required tools, the strength that we can say break by hand. So there's a lot of stuff that we can call. What we definitely want to call is the strength method right here because this determines how long it takes to break this. And then what we also want to call is the requires a tool method. Because while at the moment we're not going to have drops for our blocks, we're going to do that in a later tutorial. This is always required if you want to specify a specific tool that is needed for to mine this block. And of course, a Mithra block would only be mineable with a pickaxe. So this is why we need to call the requires tool method as well. And like I said, there is a few more things in here. Highly recommend just playing around with this. Be open to experimentation. This is basically for everything in here. As soon as you have a few of the fundamentals down, so this means Java and a little bit of modding stuff, just play around with a lot of things in here, call a bunch of stuff, see what happens. And then, I mean, basically, you're probably going to figure out some stuff that you didn't know before. Right, now this is the Mithra block registered. This is fine. Everything is done. Now, of course, we still need some JSON files. So once again, our favorite part of this. Now we're going to need some new folders. So in the tutorial mod folder in the assets folder, right click new directory called block states. You can see once again, tutorial mod block states exactly written like this. Very important. Now in the block states folder, what does it look like? We're going to once again in the block states folder, right click new file. And this is going to be the mithril underscore block dot JSON. Once again, the name of this JSON file has to be exactly like this and then .json. I'm going to once again type this out. All of this is available to you in the GitHub repository and in individual gists all linked in the description. And we're going to start with once again, the curly brackets, and then we're going to have variance colon curly bracket, then empty quotation marks colon curly bracket model colon tutorial mod colon block slash mithril underscore block. So this is how a block states JSON looks like. Now we're going to see in the future some more complex block states JSON files because, well, we can, of course, define variance here should be fairly self-explanatory if we have something called variance. But in this case, we don't have a variant. We're simply pointing to one particular model file. I'll explain this after we've added this. So in the models folder, right click new directory called block. Very important. This is block. And then inside of there, a new file called once again, mithril underscore block dot JSON. Once again, exactly written like this. Also very important. And the contents of this look eerily similar to some of the item model JSONs, but we're just going to once again type this out. So this is going to be curly brackets and then parent colon block slash cube underscore all comma textures colon curly brackets, all, colon, tutorial mod, colon, block, slash, mithril, underscore, block. So what the frick is going on here? It looks very similar. If we take a look at the item model for the mithril ingot, you can see that it looks very, very similar, right? Only the parent is different. And then instead of layer zero, it says all. Well, what is this? Of course, this is a block model JSON file. So this determines how the block looks. Okay, what, what does that really entail? Well, of course, we have a parent here, which now is block slash cube all, meaning that we basically want to set the textures for the cube, right? So for a basically block, all the textures are pointing to this texture right here. We've already seen what this entails, right? This looks for the tutorial mod folder, and then the textures folder. And instead of there, we're actually going to look for a block folder. So that was also something we need in the textures folder, new directory called block. And then inside of there, it's going to look for a mithril underscore block dot PNG. So I'm once again, going to copy this over. This is, of course, also available to you. Please note the actual license under which this is distributed. Uh, overall, that is pretty much all that there is to it, right? So this points to this. Now, the question is, well, why do we need the block states? Well, once again, the block states is there to specify the model that is there to being displayed in the world. So the block states make sure that the block is displayed in the world properly. The block model JSON points to a texture. And then interestingly enough, we actually also need an item model JSON because, well, we want this to be displayed properly in the inventory. So this is mithril underscore block that JSON once again. Now, this is actually a very easy JSON file because this simply points back to the 
block model JSON. So we're going to have curly brackets and then a parent, colon, tutorial mod, colon, block, slash, mithril, underscore, block. So this parent right here points back to the block model JSON file and then basically displays our mithril block in the 3D way that we have, you know, come to know and love our blocks inside of the inventory. That's basically all that this does. So for a block, to sort of recap, we need a block states JSON file, we need a block model JSON file, and we need an item model JSON file. If for whatever reason, your block texture does not work inside of the world, but it does work inside of your inventory, you have an issue with your block states JSON. If the block works in the world, but it has a missing texture in the inventory, it's your item model JSON that is to blame. If it is in both, then it is either the block model JSON, because that is basically dependent on both of them, or it might also be both of the others. So you're always going to need all three of them for every block. That is just how it's going to be. Of course, there's also a translation. So let's just add it right here. So I'm just going to add it a little bit further down. And this is, of course, going to be block dot tutorial mod dot mithril underscore block, which is going to be the mithril block. There you go. So once again, should be fairly self-explanatory at this point. This is just the name of the actual block that we've registered. This is our mod ID. And then this is a block. So of course, it needs to be block. Now, these are all of the steps that we need to take. Like I said, a little bit more complicated than the items. But overall, once you, you know, get it down and, you know, and really think about it, it isn't that crazy, all things considered. So now let's see if it works. Oh, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. As you can see, the Mithril block has been successfully added to the game and it all works fine. So I can place it down, you know, I can throw it around and it has a name, a texture in both the inventory as well as in the world. So that is pretty cool. Right, and once again, just for completion's sake, we're going to add a second block as well, just so that you can basically see how it works. We're going to add the Mithril Ore. So I'm just going to once again select this, Control c to copy it, Control v to paste it in, and we're going to rename this to Mithril Ore. And then very important that this is the same right here. Now we're going to change the material to stone, and the strength, I'm going to Put down to like 4.5 that's going to be fine and then when i have this once again the block is in game now i still need a block states json the translation block model json and an item model json as well as the texture so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this by dragging it into the same folder right while holding control i'm going to rename it mithril underscore or and then same here mithril underscore or i'm going to do the similar thing right here i'm going to select this Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it in. And we're going to say Mithril Ore and a Mithril Ore here as well. And then I'm going to do the same with the model JSON, dragging it into the same folder. And I'm just going to rename this to a Mithril underscore Ore. Now this will point to a Mithril underscore Ore texture. And the item model, I'm going to make sure that I could copy one from a block model here, right? So because this one, of course, looks different than this one. So I want to make sure that I copy the mithril block once more. And here, I'm just going to call it mithril underscore or. And then inside of here, mithril underscore or. Now, all of the JSON files have also been added. Let's put in the texture as well. So let's just copy that over mithril underscore or. And there you go. That is the second block also added. So once again here, you don't need to copy any of those methods again. Only the field needs to be there so one field for one block and that is it so for completion sake let's see if it works all right we found us back in minecraft and as you can see the mithril ore also has been successfully added to the game everything working the textures both in inventory and in the world and also the translation has also worked totally fine as you can see that is how easy it can be but this time I will be leaving you with three different block textures, the netherrack mithril ore, the deep state mithril ore, and the raw mithril block right here. So you can basically implement those in your own time. I will have them implemented next time anyway, so no worries there. Once again, usually this should be a very trivial thing at this point. It is just going to be the JSON files, a new field for each of the blocks, and that's pretty much going to be it. And this is also pretty much going to be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like from you. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.